So what I'm going to do today is make some coasters but try and mess them up because there are lots of problems that can happen when you're making coasters and I want to show you how you can rescue them and also one of the most common issues with coasters is that once they've cured they've got a rough area to them because the resin shrinks and leaves a rough edge. I'm going to show you how to get rid of this. So this tutorial is all about how to correct problems with coasters. I've got these lovely moulds that Mary sent me. Thank you so much, Mary. I really do appreciate it. And she sent me lots of stuff. If anybody ever wants to send me anything, my PO box is in the description below. So for these coasters, what I'm actually going to be using is the Easy Coat Resin. It's ideal for casting coasters of about this depth. But also, because it dries so hard and it's really clear and it's sandable if there are problems with it which i'm going to try and force to happen then i know that i'll be able to rectify it really easily and this is a really great heat resistance to it as well which i'll show you at the end this needs to be mixed as two parts a and one part B. So make sure that you get your measurements correct. My resin's all mixed up and what I've got is three different colours. I've used a mixture of mica powder and opaque colour pigment. Because I want to try and make these as colourful as I can. Now I'm not going to let this resin sit and thicken up. What I'm actually going to do is just leave it like this. Because I want to mix this around, I'm going to work silicon on silicon. Move this about a little bit, but I don't want to blend it in too much at this point. And now I'm going to add my top colour in, or my final colour, which is a white mica powder. I have no idea how this is going to turn out or what it's going to look like. I'm just really playing around to make these coasters. And now I'm going to take my silicon tool again now and work that colour through a little bit more. Then mix up some more resin so I can actually make the holder as well. Leave these to cure and then I'll show you what's going to come next to repair any problems. Or if there aren't any problems in them, I'll make some and then show you what you can do if it happens to you. Well, these have all cured now and I'm hoping that I have been able to mess them up. What I'm hoping is that the base of these is going to have a lot of little bubbles attached to it because I didn't do any squidgy widget, I didn't reduce it down and I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. Oh and it has, look. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, I think you can see them. There's bubbles in there and there's a slight sharp edge on this bit but they did come out really pretty much prettier than i thought they would come out so that is what you put these coasters in okay so and it all looks very pretty like that what i'm going to show you is where this really does come into its own this easy pour resin so i'm gonna take one quite a lot of bubbles on it let's have a look and that's got kind of a little bit of a lump going on in the middle there as well i don't know if you can see that i think perhaps that's the worst one it's got a little bit of a lump there and it's got all these bubbles over. And we wouldn't want to have to waste these and chuck these away. And we want to finish them off nicely. So what I'm going to do is I've got some sandpaper here and I'm going to sand this one down. If I was going to do the whole lot, I would just go through and do the whole lot. But I want to show you what it's like. Now this is wet and dry sandpaper. So that means it can be used with some water on it. Because it's waterproof sandpaper. And I'm using a 120 grit here. I'm going to pop some water on this and actually it really helps because it stops the dust getting up and into the air. Although I will use a mask while I'm doing this as well to be careful. Now all I'm going to do is sand this until those little dots are gone from where all those bubbles were. I'm going to try and keep it as flat as possible the whole time I'm going to sand it. But I am moving it around as well as you can see. Shouldn't take long to get this done. So I've sanded that down now, it took me about three minutes. Now I could go through all the grits up to about 6,000 or maybe 12,000 grit and polish that right up so it was as shiny as that. But who's got time for that? Because I certainly haven't. So what I'm going to do is I've given it a little bit of a wipe over with the cloth to get rid of as much of the dust as I could that was stuck on there and the goop. And now I'm going to quickly just go over it with some 99% alcohol. 
and let that dry itself. There we go. And look how dull that is in comparison to that one. And we don't want that dull like that. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use this as a coating resin. And it will still dry and cure as hard as it did before. And also it will get rid of all those scratch marks and give you a lovely finish. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to flip this one upside down. Because as you can see, these ones have got that little rough edge in where they've shrunk away. And I made sure I underfilled these, which is so unlike me as you probably know. So I'm going to just give that a bit of a clean out as well and then fill that at the same time as I do this. So I've got my resin mixed up and all I'm going to do now is dip my finger in there and start to rub that resin onto here onto this surface because I don't want it to be too heavy because what last thing I want it to do is keep rolling all over the edges when I've done a nice job of sanding it like that. But I, will, I do want it to be completely covered and an even thin coat of it. And what I'm going to do is leave that there for a few minutes because at the moment it's got streaks on it and that's where my finger's been. But that should self-level itself anyway. To help that on its way, what I'm going to do is, because I've also added some bubbles to it, is go over it with my long neck lighter, which will get rid of any of those bubbles, but it will also help dramatically remove any of those streaks that are in there too. And then we'll leave that to cure. And then this one, all I have to do is pour this in. Now it's better to work on a level surface. Now I'm not working on a very level surface at the moment because I've just moved and I'm still trying to find everything. I need to find me leveling tables because they're about somewhere and I can fill this in using this and it will give me a nice flat base. Again, I can pop the bubbles as they come up using a long neck lighter. And this is why it's really important to always try and use the right resin for the right project. And this is brilliant for tables coating coasters like this coating and making pictures because it really does cure so hard and it's really nice and heat proof these have been curing now for 24 hours and as you can see this is the one where i put the coating on i forgot to cover it up though please don't make that mistake so i've got little bits of dust in it my extractor fan draws air out of the room and but then draws dust so Try not to get dust on them, but look how beautiful and shiny that is. It is really great coating. Not a single bubble in there. And then this is the one where I did the fill. And again, really cured hard. And they will fit in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how heat proof this is. Now I would always suggest leaving them three weeks before you actually put anything hot on. But I've just left it 24 hours. So I'm going to show you how hot this is. So I've just boiled the cow. I hope you can see the steam coming off that. Oh no, it's steamed up my camera. So that's how hot that is. Let me try and get that all cleared again. Right, so now that's cleared, what I'm going to do is put that cup on there, fill it with boiling water, and then just leave it on there until I can stick my finger in it, and it's nice and cool. Well, that's cooled right down now. I can stick my finger in it and hold my finger in it for quite a while. Now, remember, this has only been curing for 24 hours, this resin, and look at that. There's not a single mark on that at all. I'm really, really impressed with that. I mean, I wouldn't go hotter than a hot cup of tea. I wouldn't use it as a trivet for saucepans and things like that because I haven't tested it, I don't know. But for coasters and that, it's absolutely perfect. And I want to quickly show you, where's one with lots of bubbles? See, look at that. Lots of bubbles in there. You see them? Not a single bubble in there and perfectly coated and finished. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is how to get perfect coasters, even if they're not perfect when you want them to be perfect. So that's what you can achieve with the Easy Coat Resin by Tea Expert. It is a brilliant resin. It really is. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to save your coasters or how to make coasters, even if you've ruined them or they're not coming out how you like them to come out. Boot that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Check out the video that's coming up on the screen next because I think you're really going to like it. It's a great resin experiment and I learned a lot from this one but most of all take care and enjoy your resin. Bye!